This video is dedicated to John Robbins, my dad, who lost his 14 year battle with kidney disease on the 18th of December 2023. He lost the fight while my wife and I were actually on this cruise. John wasn't just the man that gave me life, he gave me a career and he made me the man I am today. Today's upload date, the 5th of March 2024, would have been Dad's 86th birthday. Happy first heavenly birthday, Dad. Love you and I miss you. Welcome to another Tomcat holiday vlog. Now in this holiday, my wife and I are going to be doing quite a few new things. So the first thing that's new, what we've never done before, is when we got to the airport here, so we're at Manchester Airport, we did the car drop and go. Never heard of it before, never done it before, and it was even cheaper than getting taxis. So instead of paying, I think, 85 quid in taxes, we paid 75 quid to park here at the airport for 10 days. So it's a definite must and it's dead easy to do. You just drive your car to the drop and go car park. They then scan your car to make sure there's no damage to it or there's no damage when you get it back. And then you park in a lane, you hand over your key, and then they push you to the terminal that we're here in Terminal 1 because we are flying to Gran Canaria, Las Palmas Airport for another first because we're actually going on a cruise. We've never been on a cruise before so it's another first for us and we're going on a Tui Morella uh, cruise and we're on the Explorer, so really looking forward to that. But before we actually get on the plane and fly to Gran Canaria to pick up the boat, we're going to get a breakfast here at the airport. So let's get on with it and eat a £40 breakfast before we get on the plane, fly off to Gran Canaria and pick up this cruise ship. Explorer is a century class cruise ship owned and operated by Morella Cruises. Before joining TUI in 2018, she cruised as MV Galaxy with Celebrity Cruises and then later as Mine Shift with TUI Cruises. She was laid down in the Meyer Wharf shipyard in Papenburg, Germany on the 25th of May 1995, costing $320 million to build. She was launched in May 1996 and was delivered to Celebrity Cruises on the 10th of October 1996. She entered service on the 21st of December 1996. So we will actually be on board to celebrate her 27th birthday. 
she displaces 76,998 gross tons. She is 852 feet long. She has a beam of 105 feet 8 inches. She has a draft of 25 feet 3 inches. She has 10 passenger decks with 14 in total. She can carry 1,924 passengers and 909 crew. The ship is also the same ship that starred in the BBC TV documentary The Cruise, which catapulted the singer and TV presenter Jay MacDonald into stardom. Now it's time to actually board the ship. So after being dropped off by the coach, you actually leave your bags behind and you go into the check-in, where you're given these. These are your door keys and the cards you will use for everything on the ship including paying for any duty free but i'll explain that later on then it's time for security where you will have to have your bags x-rayed this also happens every time you get off the ship and get back on the ship when you're in other ports and now it's time to actually go on the gangplank and into the belly of the ship now Depending on how high the dock is will depend on which way you exit and enter the ship. But again, I'll explain more later. Now, before you leave home, you will need to print these luggage labels off and attach them to your suitcase so they know which room to take it to. It also tells you what deck and what cabin you're in because when they give you the cards, the cards will just tell you your room number, not your deck. Now we're on deck 8, room 8094, which is on the starboard side. And if you want to know which is the starboard side, that's if you're looking at the bow or the front of the ship, it is the right side. The left hand side of the ship is called the port. As you can see here on this photograph, you can see the starboard is green coloured and the port is red coloured. Now that's because they use green and red lights to show which side of the ship you can see. Because you want to know whether the ship is coming towards you or going away from you in the dark. And that's why both planes and ships have coloured lights. Green on the right side, red on the left. So once you've found your deck, it's now time to find your cabin and you should find your suitcases waiting for you outside the door. So here's our cabin, 8094. Let's see if this key actually works. All right, it does. So let's take a look inside this cabin. So first thing just behind the door is we have some wardrobes. So we have one wardrobe with hanging space and we've got shelves with our life jackets. Also, we've got drawers and a safe. So to activate your safe, you just put in your own four numbers, whatever you want. Wait until you've heard the bleep and it will lock. And then if you want to open it back up again, all you've got to do is put in the same four numbers again and hey presto, it opens. Here you can see the four drawers and next to this we have more hanging space with another life jacket. So there is plenty of wardrobe space in this cabin so far. Now all the cabins come with air conditioning. I would like to say it was absolutely fantastic but it wasn't but it was adequate. So let's take a look in the bathroom. So we have a walk-in shower. This is a drying rail, which just clips over to the other side, just like that, so you can dry all your swimming gear. Now just to the side of the toilet, there is a cupboard with the spare toilet roll, then there's a bin, then there's another cupboard with more shelves in to put all your toiletries in. We get, for some reason, a 230 volt plug socket in there, and when you flush the toilet, it's just like the toilet on an aeroplane where it uses a vacuum to draw everything down. So that's the bathroom. Let's go and have a look into the bedroom itself. So you can see we have brewing facilities and just under the brewing facilities, there is our own fridge. Now, because we're on the all-inclusive package, we get bottles of water every day. 
which we never hardly used because we hardly used the place for brewing. Now one thing the cabin isn't blessed with is plug sockets. This is the plug socket behind the kettle and there are two plug sockets at the dressing table. And let's not forget the one in the bathroom. Now for some reason we have US and European plug sockets. No UK plug sockets. And there is definitely no USB sockets. So make sure you take plenty of adapters and even take an extension lead with maybe three or four sockets on it because you will need it. More shelves, more glasses, big mirror. And then we've got the bed and at the side of the bed we've got two sets of drawers with lights on it so the bottom drawer perfect opens but for some reason on my side top one doesn't open because it has the main light switch on there now that's a bit stupid i think you also get a tv in the room now the TV had 16 channels, it had two main news channels and it had a couple of film channels and we did watch a couple of films late on at night. Now I believe in decks 10 and above all the rooms have now got smart TVs in there where you can do a lot more stuff and a lot more interactive stuff but deck 8 hasn't got it yet. Well, that is of December 2023. So just across from the TV, we have a little settee, which also is a pull-out bed. So if Will was staying with us on this trip, that's what would have been his bed. And not that I need it, but you do get a hairdryer in the top drawer. Now also on the dressing table, you get these two little cards, what you can plug into the lock to tell the steward to look after your room, what you actually want. Now we wanted a room with a balcony, so let's have a look. So we've got a nice sliding door and a balcony with a decent view of the port. Not too shabby. So that is what our cabin looks like. A little bit dated, but pretty good. Now, one of the things you've got to do on your first night or day here is you have to go to your muster stations. These above my head are the lifeboats. So you have to take your card with you, both cards, to your muster station. We are muster station B. So you have to get them scanned with, uh, to say that we're on the ship. And they can't sail until we've all done this. This full promenade here, and just full of the lifeboats. So, first night, don't forget your card, make sure you go to the muster station at your designated time. Now, if you want to find your way around the ship, it's incredibly easy. Now, each stairwell is colour coded on the carpets. We are in the red section, that means we're in the mid section. The green carpet means you're in the aft part of the ship which technically means the back end of the ship. And the blue carpet means you're at the forward part of the ship, which is the front or the bow. But at each uh, set of lifts, there's these boards. So if I were to find our cabin, we go on to cabin finder. We then put in our number, which is 809 four and then we go search and then it shows us here on the board exactly where our cabin is so you can't get lost so these smart boards are not just for finding your cabin you can also find lots of information on the different ports and the different islands that you're actually going to visit there is also a fixed information board what tells you what deck you're on and it's highlighted on what's on that deck and it also gives you all the other information on all the other decks. Now let's have a little tour of the ship. We'll start at deck 5 where the main reception is and also the destination service. At the destination service you'll find these smart screens where you can book trips and you can also book different restaurants. Charlotte's now going to demonstrate how you book a trip 
and again you can see we're using the card to book the trip which will automatically put uh, the price of the trip onto Charlotte's credit card it will also print out your tickets for you and then you need to take these tickets with you to the trip or to the restaurant where you've booked and once you've finished just make sure you log out of the screen now a lot of you will be thinking about Wi-Fi there isn't Wi-Fi well there is but you got to pay extra for it but there is a free Wi-Fi on the Explorer to use their app. So the first thing you need to do is log in. Now once you've logged in, you can see it's pretty much the same as a smart screen. So you can make bookings for trips and the restaurant, and you can also check what you've spent. But the first thing you need to do is put in your numbers off your card. So there'll be an account number on your card, and then you put in your cabin number, and then you log in. So this is now linked to whoever's credit card it was. And now you can see exactly what we've spent while we've been on this ship. So you can see quite a lot of them say zero. So when we use the bar or when we get coffees, it registers those as well. So every time you use your card, it registers on your app. So you can see we've spent quite a bit of money, £578.39p and Charlotte's credit card. So that's a quick guide on using the Explorer app. Now also on deck five is a fine dining restaurant, the Dining Club. Now this restaurant is not part of your all-inclusive package and is chargeable. And I think it cost us 77 pounds to dine here. Now the food selection in here was really good. You could get scallops with champagne butter, which we had, and we also had the Chateaubriand. And for dessert, obviously, I had to go for the chocolate pudding. I even tried the non-alcoholic wine while I was on board, which is chargeable unless, like us, you've gone for the all-inclusive plus. Also at reception, you'll find the atrium, with stairs only going from deck 5 to deck 6. Also between decks 5 and 6, but at the after the ship, or at the back, you will find restaurant Latitude 53. This is where we dine for most of our meals for breakfast, lunch and dinner. The ship has 10 restaurants but Latitude 53 was our favourite place to dine. The food was great, the service was great and the whole place looked amazing. Come the evening time, Latitude 53 transforms into a contemporary Italian restaurant where you can get regional Italian favourites made with authentic ingredients. Right outside, Latitude 53 was Bar 53, a bar which we never used but it did have the stairs to get to deck number 6. Another venue over two decks, so deck 6 and 7, was the Broadway Show Lounge. We only visited the Broadway Show Lounge on the one occasion just to watch this Christmas special. Most of the time we got our entertainment from sitting in the lounge. The Show Lounge has a capacity of a thousand people, rivaling most Broadway theatres, and you get handed a drink on arrival. Now being a massive coffee drinker, one of the favourite places on the ship for me was the coffee port. But again, if you haven't got the All Inclusive Plus, you would have to pay for your coffees. Also on deck number 6 is the ship cinema. And again, we only visited this once and we watched the 1946 classic It's a Wonderful Life, starring James Stewart and directed by Frank Capra. There are technically two cinemas on this ship, one here on deck 6 and the other one is on deck 12, the pool deck. Like I said previously, the lounge is where we spent most of our evenings after dinner. Now the lounge did get quite busy, but if you stick around you do get some fantastic entertainment on this little stage. Also on deck 6 you'll find the photo gallery kiosk and the photo studio. And surprisingly this. Now there is an escalator on board. Which goes from deck 6. So watch what happens when I come near it. 
it automatically comes on but it only goes from deck six up to deck seven where the shops are so literally at the top of this escalator is where the shops are now there are shops on the ship but when you're in port they are closed and this is the grand staircase by the titanic so on the ship there are quite a few shops and they sell things like designer clothes, jewellery, uh, you can buy food, you can buy drink but when you come to pay for your goods you use your door key not your credit card. On deck 7 you'll find a pair of teeth. Thanks to its location it is a great spot to head for before or after a meal at one of the specialist restaurants. The menu here features everything from Prosecco to spirits and cocktails. This is where you'll also find the Surf and Turf Steakhouse or Korala, the Indian restaurant. Now both of these restaurants carry an extra charge and I would recommend that you make a reservation as soon as you enter the ship. Now we did dine at the steakhouse and I had the French onion soup which was absolutely amazing and for main I had the mixed grill with all the trimmings and I had two puddings because Charlotte didn't want hers. Corolla is just to the right of the steakhouse which offers a pan-Asian selection of curries and noodle dishes plus bespoke dishes created by a master chef. And just up from a paratif, you will find the sushi restaurant. Again, this is another chargeable restaurant, but if you're not into sushi, you can actually get dim sum there made right in front of your eyes. Again, make a reservation ASAP on arrival. Now, probably Charlotte's favourite part of the ship was the Squid and Anchor. This is designed to look like a traditional British pub and it has a drinks menu to match. In the evenings, you can enjoy everything from live bands and musicians to interactive game shows and quizzes. We also had a Q&A with the captain here too. Good morning, captain. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very honoured that uh, so many of you came to <laughs> now because the squid and anchor is also right at the very aft of the ship or the back of the ship there is an outside bar which is one of the designated smoking areas there are only three designated smoking areas on the ship here on deck six and this outside section here on the pool deck well we're looking at the top end of the ship and we're on deck 11 we will find the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean refers to the fact that on one side you will find fresh pizza slices and cooked to order pasta and on the other side it's tapas. You will also find there is a glass roof here and an outdoor bar. So if you want to lie around the pool all day and you're not bothered going to the restaurants to eat then on deck 11 the pool deck you will find the snack shack which serves up hot dogs burgers and fish and chips as well as a selection of ready-made sandwiches and fruit pots and there's these little booths where you can eat your food now just across from the mediterranean is the marketplace where you can watch chefs whip up dishes from around the world at this buffy restaurant it makes up lots of different food stalls hence the name you can pick up fresh out of the oven pizzas, grilled to order paninis and sandwiches at lunchtime and there's design your own stations every night where you can choose all the ingredients for dishes like stir fries. This is also a good place to pick up your free coffees where you can also get caffeinated or decaffeinated coffees. If you have children between the ages of 3 and 11, well why don't you get them in the kids club on deck 9. There is a swimming pool, they can do arts and crafts and quizzes. There's also mini discos and there are parent accompanied sessions for the under 3s. If you have older children or spouses who think they're still kids, then there is the Gamer Zone which is an interactive space which consists of game consoles. The Gamer Zone is located in the Red Staircase area midships on Deck 8. Just through these doors is the attic where you can sit quietly, read a book, play a board game or just listen to music. 
Now if you haven't got any children, then why don't you go to the blue staircase on deck 12 and check out the Indigo nightclub and casino. Now believe it or believe it not, you can boogie to the early hours of the morning to the silent disco. Something I've never done and I don't think I ever will do is a silent disco. But if that's your type of thing, then you can check it out or you can just sit there and enjoy the evening with a few cocktails and a few glasses of champagne. There is also a very small casino where you can play blackjack, roulette and poker and there is also slot machines. If you've had enough of eating and you need to work some of it off there is a gym and spa on deck 11. There is a jogging track on deck 12, not a very big one. There is also a sports deck on deck 12 where you can play football or table tennis. Didn't see anybody using this while we were there. And my favourite place on deck 12, which was hidden on the other side of the ship, so the aft part of the ship, there was mini golf. So I love crazy golf. And no matter where we go on holiday, I love to play mini golf. So just in this chest here, you will find the clubs and the balls for playing golf. They're supposed to be scorecards and pens as well, but there wasn't any in there. Always make sure you put them back when you're finished. So, let's have a game of Crazy Golf while I'm here. Now after a long evening of eating and drinking and the entertainment and you go back to your cabin, your stewards have prepared your bed so you can just dive right in there. Now one of the things we did look forward to in the mornings when we got back from breakfast was when the stewards had made the beds and tidied the room up and made these fantastic animals out of the towels. Now the blue towels are the pool towels and you get two of those. Uh, but if you do lose them, you have to pay a tenner. But how fantastic do these animals look? But we were very disappointed because we only got two animals. Now as you've seen, there are trips you can book on the ship for when you're in port. My advice to you is, don't bother with them. Especially if you're on the island of Madeira and you're at the capital city of Funchal. It's dead easy to get around and they even bus you from the ship to outside the port. So we're here at the Botanical Gardens and we've just been brought here by a local taxi driver who reckons he could take us around everywhere and make sure we didn't get ripped off and it would cost us 120 euros plus the price of the tickets for coming in here, the cable car, and the toboggan because that's what we want to do now we looked at the price of this and it's 35 euros and it's just got us in here for seven euros 50 cents each so when you come to the botanical gardens you don't have to pay the 35 euro entrance fee you can just pay seven euros 50 
for the upkeep of the garden because it belongs to the people of Madeira. So, hopefully, we don't get kidnapped or murdered on this little excursion. But the same thing happened to us in Poland. We put our faith in a Polish guide when we were in Krakow and we had an amazing day, even though we panicked all the time we were there. But he hasn't taken any money off us yet because he said if it's not worth it, he won't give uh, take the money. So we'll find out if using these local taxi drivers is actually worth it or no. Anyway, let's get on with it and have a look at these botanical gardens. So if you're not into flowers like I'm not, the botanical garden still gives you a magnificent view over Madeira's capital city, Funchal. So Pedro's just dropped us off here at the wicker basket place where we're going to go tobogganing down the high street down to the bottom and Pedro is going to meet us there and then bring us back up to the cable car where we can have something to eat and then we can take the cable car ra ride down the mountain hill wherever it is so let's get on with it and get into there and have a go at doing this wicker basket to have it's 35 euros for the two years. come on then And if you wondered how the toboggans and the drivers got back to the start point, yeah, they came back in this van. Now if you've seen my channel before, you know I'm not good with heights. We're going to go in the cable car and we're going to go down there. You can actually see our cruise ship from here. So, we're going down there. Not looking forward to this, but let's get on with it. There are two cable cars in Funchal. There is the Funchal cable car and the Botanical Garden cable car, which connects the city of Funchal to the parish of Mont. The journey in the cable cars takes between 15 and 20 minutes, depending on which one you're riding. The steep journey is approximately 3,200 meters long, climbing up to a height of 560 meters above sea level. The route of the cable car was chosen to replace the old Mont Railway, which ran from 1886 to 1943. Construction of the cable car system began in September 1999. It was opened in November 2000 and has been in service ever since. Cableway has over 39 cabins with 8 seats each and can transport up to 800 passengers an hour. Just on our journey up the hill and back down the hill 
um, what can I say? <laughs> it's got to be done. You've got to do the tobogganing and the cable car, the best way I think is to come down. So did we get ripped off by Pedro by paying 120 euros for our trip round? I don't think so because he did give us a guided tour and he stayed with us all the time and he was there to pick us up and he drove us everywhere and this is where we actually met him here so the cable car stop is there and we just met him here so if you are coming to Madeira and you are in Funchal look out for Pedro it cost you 120 euros, but money well spent. Now the only trip we did pay for was the Christmas lights at night time, obviously, because that's the best time to see the lights, and the Christmas markets, but we'd already gone to the Christmas markets during the day. But we did get this spectacular picture of Funchal and our cruise ship. And obviously, being an absolutely massive Man United fan, while I'm in Madeira, and Funchal, you've got to go to Cristiano Ronaldo's museum. Well, it's not really a museum for me. It was more of a shrine, because the way they've laid it out, it's just full of his trophies, his medals, and footballs. On your final night aboard the ship, the stewards will leave a coloured luggage tag and a little letter telling you what time your departure is the following morning. So on this final night, you will have to attach the luggage label to your cases and leave them outside your cabin, ready for the stewards to take them away. When you disembark the ship, your luggage will be waiting for you in the baggage claim area of the terminal building, separated in zone numbers. You must personally locate your luggage and then you can carry it out to the waiting coaches to take you to the airport for our homeward flight. cases has made it back at home also so hopefully you've liked the video and i'll catch you on the next one cheers